Hello Watch Fam, I'm the Chirpy Panda and welcome to another episode of Unboxing and First Impressions. Today's watch is the Richard Legrand Odyssey. A Legrand. I feel like um, every time I say that it reminds me of that that skit where um, they're talking about like a grande coffee and then the medium coffee. So like, the grande being like you got a big dick or something. Here you go guys. Two regular lattes. All right. And mine. <laughs> what the hell is that? They call it a cafe grande. <laughs> So what I have today is the Richard Legrand Odyssey in pastel blue. I believe they call it pastel blue. It looks really similar to that Tiffany blue, except this one is more like a baby blue instead of a kind of greenish looking Tiffany look. So it's a different color. I don't have any watches in. I don't have any blue watches, first of all, but I definitely don't have any baby blue or pastel blue watches. And this one seems a little bit special. It's a boutique brand, Richard Legrand. It's got a sapphire crystal, it has sapphire bezel and, and all that good stuff. And I thought, let's give this a go. It looks special. I got it for 379 on pre-order and it finally came so without further ado let's flip the camera around and check it out welcome back guys so in front of me is the RLG, Richard Legrand. What a name for a watch, isn't it? Um, this is my first R RLG, first Richard Legrand. I'm gonna have a ball saying Legrand. <laughs> and uh, this is the Odyssey Diver in pastel blue. I saw this when it was on pre-order sale. On the website, it says $429 as of writing. So uh, it is currently out of stock. Having said that, I'm sure they will restock this. Now, uh, this is my first impression and unboxing. I don't know too much about this brand, so let's experience this together. The box itself is very, um, uh, this, this case that it comes with, nothing too fancy. Um, this is covered really well. Oh yeah, of course, it, can, it comes in this watch roll. So every watch you buy from RLG, it comes in a watch roll like this. So um, you can carry it and I guess, you know, take it with you to wherever you need to, oh, it's upside down, wherever you need to go. You know, this is very classy. I gotta, I gotta admit, is this real leather? I think this is real leather. This is kind of suede inside, which is nice. Um, so this is the watch, and this is an extra strap. Now, before I jump into the watch, as I always do, let's put this here, and let's see what's inside. Uh, so it comes with two years warranty, um, and I guess that's the international warranty card. Uh, comes with a, uh, I think it's, it's to change the links, obviously. It's to change your uh, watch links. But what's this extra tool that it has? So this is obviously to get the links out. Is this to do this? No, what? Oh, damn, look at that. That is way better than my, the one I have. So this is what you use to get the links out. So you put it at the, the push pin link on one side, go bang, 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 it comes out. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this is called, but that's really cool. Like it comes in as a full hammer. Way, way better than the, the stuff that you get in those watchmaker kits. Um, it's very high quality, I can tell. It's the, the, the metal is really good. So I just chucked that back in, highly unlikely I'm gonna use it though. Um, but I'll keep it, I'll keep it in the box. Uh, it's got some um, spring bars. And the instruction menu. I've wasted enough of your time. Let's get back to the watch. Now let's crack this bad boy open. So I did get the pastel blue with the um, black bezel. Extremely pretty looking. Oh wow. It, it gives me the vibe of the Tiffany blue, if you guys know what I mean. Um, I think Rolex was doing a lot of these colors and I guess RLG decided, you know what, I want in on this new pastel colors. Give me some of that bad boy. Ah, wow. This is a stunner, guys. I'm not sure what size it is. I will measure it out, but let's, let's remove the plastic and get a very good look at it. So far, everything feels very solid, very weighted. Everything's feel like it's not cheap is the best way I can say. So sometimes when you pick up like a, a, a budget type of watch, when I say budget, this isn't really budget, but you know, like a Seiko that's around the $100, $200, you can tell that it's kind of cheap, if that makes sense. Um, it feels light and the, the, the bracelet is what really gives it away. So far this bracelet feels um, um, pretty good. Okay, please, 
Yes, thank you. Okay. The, I just noticed the bezel. Can you see how the bezel is? Um, it's kind of got like a, a, is it acrylic on top? Very retro. Um, 120 clicks by the by the feels of it. Um, very very smooth, but it snaps into place really well. So, is that is that in line? Oh, I missed it. Ah. Is, it, is that, oh, that's already in line, that's why, okay, sorry. There's no back play, like there's no back play at all. Um, the teeth on the bezel is quite, like it kinda digs into the skin a bit though. I like how these guys have this white tab to tell you which way this plastic goes. Oh, yeah. So plastic here, so this is the clasp. Yeah, it's really nicely engraved. Uh, it's not very deeply engraved, but it's engraved pretty well. What, the bracelet? You know what? This is very good bracelet. Um, it's it's not hollow endlix as well. It's um, it's it's proper endlix. It's not hollow. I think it's the best way I can describe it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whoa. Brilliant. Let's check out the dimensions before we proceed. So the diameter of the case is thirty eight. Ah, my favorite size. Twelve point uh, eight. Um, the crystal is very, very slightly domed, almost flush um, in terms of the, the bezel to the, uh, to the crystal ratio. Um, the lug to lug, 45. Oh wow, it's 45 with a 38 diameter. That's really good. That means the, the lugs are very, very short. I think the lug width is 20. Yeah, it's 20. So lug width is 20. Now I'm just going to do one more. To the, to the actual crown, because the crown is kind of big. 42 with the crown, I believe. Yeah, or 41, give or take. So very, very wearable. Um, the 20 lug width is, I feel like it's slightly big. I, I kind of like 18, because I've got a lot of 18 strap, but I do have some 20 because of my Seiko SKX007. Um, so definitely interchangeable. Can chuck some of these NATOs here. This is an 18, but I've got like 20s. These type of NATOs will look kind of good i guess on this um let's see what this other strap is boss before i move on to the actual watch so oh it's a oh it's a leather perforated um strap on a dive watch oh hmm. sacrilegious for some people isn't it so i don't know if you guys can see um is this leather or is it it's not leather sorry top peak i say is that the material it feels kind of um raisin like Okay, that's really cool then. I thought it was leather initially, but if it's if it's like a water resistant plastic, then this would go really well. Would go really well. Oh, look at that. Look at that bad boy. What does it actually say? It is 20 mil, okay. So this would look amazing with that. What, what do you guys think with the black? Um, I think it would look cooler brown though. Maybe. Now, moving back onto the actual dial, as I mentioned before, it is a pastel blue. It reminds me of the Tiffany blue, but I don't think is as, you know, the greenish hue on the Tiffany is not as greenish. So it's more like a baby blue, very, very light blue. Um, to the eye, it's more dark than it is showing on the, the screen for some reason. Um, in addition to that, each uh, indices, so you know the 12 and then each baton indices are applied and they're applied very very well um, The loom on it is extremely generous and the actual indices on the side it's, it's like a plastic But it's kind of like a shiny black kind of resin like plastic, but it's almost entirely uh, Loom now. Let me check what loom it is. Uh, oh, it's c3 loom. So is that super luminova? I think that's super luminova uh, if not, let, let me know in the comments below. I make a lot of mistakes. Feel free to correct me. Now, the crystal itself, they say it is a, a sapphire crystal uh, with a anti-reflective coating on the underside, which is very smart. I, I find it weird how they put anti-reflective coating on top because then it would just get scratched, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it is also using a 90-39 high bit slim movement. I believe that is the myota movement. Doesn't say too much about it. I'll probably have to look it up later on. It is also confirmed that you see how this is uh, this this crystal-like bezel. It is a sapphire crystal. That's why it's kind of bubbly. 
Um, so that's why it looks so nice. So basically the whole top part is sapphire, including the bezel. So chances of scratching the top of this watch is very, very slim. Love it. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a 120 click bezel, as you saw before when I was struggling. The teeth on it is a bit, how do you call it? It kind of, when you grip on it, it grips well, but if you turn it a bit too much, it does start, you see that? It is very, very, sh it's sharper than what I'm used to, I should say. In the actual bezel, it is extremely simple. It does have that vintage vibe to it, I feel. Um, so much less is more type of thing. It only has markings for the, not markings, but the numbers for the 15, I mean, the three, which is 15 minutes, 30 minutes and 45 minutes for uh, the dive timing. The rest is baton. Um, in terms of, I forgot to mention, the Richard Legrand logo has been um, revamped. I think it's been revamped for a while uh, because uh, I guess it's a bit obnoxious having the whole Richard Legrand <laughs> text on the watch. So the RLG now is a bit more subtle um, compared to before. And then at the bottom, you'll see that it says Odyssey and I believe 200 meter or 660 feet water resistance. The hands are both baton with a kind of like a diamond shaped lollipop for the seconds. Um, and then there's also a printed on chapter ring on the outside of the watch. So, you know, there's no chapter ring misalignment in that sense. Moving on to the case. The case is very, very well done. What I mean by that is the actual kind of polishing. So this is like a multi-tone polishing. The top of the lugs are brushed. But then where it meets the side, there's an edge which is just polished. So there's like a two-tone look to it. And then the side is also brushed very well. And kind of like in a horizontal method, is that how you call it? And look at that. Drilled lugs. I don't even need um, anything else other than the tool that they provided in the box already with the big hammer, the, ha the Thor, the Thor hammer to get this out. And I believe this is push pin. Yep, push pin braces. So just one tool can do the job. Moving on to the crown, I should, oh, oh, it's threaded crown. I didn't even, it, it was actually um, charged by the movement of my hand because I didn't, I didn't even use it. Um, yep, the movement is very, very smooth to wind. I love that winding feeling. Um, it feels distinctly uh, Myota-like. I uh, wonder if there's a hidden net. Let me. Okay, there's no hidden date, that's very good. I don't know too much about this 1939 movement, so I'm just kind of playing around with it now. Um, but it, it works very well, it's a threaded crown, the threading feels... Yeah, threading feels good. So I believe there's enough silicon there or loop to make it um, nice. And uh, in terms of where the case meets the bezel, there is a little lip. So the, be the bezel is like a lip and it dips in and it is brushed, not to the point of polishing. So it's, it's, it's more fine than the brushing on the actual lugs and stuff, but it's not fully polished. You can actually tell the difference between the polishing here of the side of the case as well as that little lip area. Moving on to the actual strap. Now, this strap is, it's kind of like an oyster strap. I mean, it basically is, but then it has this two-tone look on the actual bracelet. You can see this brush, middle part, but then the outside is slightly polished. That has to require some additional, oh, even the side is polished. That's got to definitely need a bit more machining there. So I um, applaud RLG, Richard Legrand, uh, for spending the additional time there. Now I'm going to measure this strap. It looks like it tapers quite a bit. So it starts off as, well, I presume 20 or 19, but let's just say 20 at the start, but it tapers down to well, tape is down to like 17.7, 7 7.6. So it tapers a fair bit. So as you can see in, in this method. So if you like that tapering look, which I do kind of, it, it makes it look more slim line. Um, then this is for you. Now, keep in mind, um, you probably have to remove some links. So it probably won't taper that much. It might taper down to about 18 from the 20. But there is some tapering there. Going on to the clasp, it is a mill clasp. Wow, it is a proper mill clasp. So they didn't, they did not skimp out on the bracelet at all. For the price that I got it for, I feel like I'm, I got a massive, massive bargain. It closes very, very, very well. How would you say it? Like it's a satisfying click, boop. And uh, it's got three micro adjusts. So, um, you know, just stock standard micro adjust, but I do like it. It's milled and not pressed 
uh, clasp. Moving on to the back, that's like a diving helmet, you know, the, the old school divers. And there's got kind of like a, the two anchors that makes like a cross. So I thought it was a pirate looking thing, but it's not. It's more nautical than piratey. <laughs> so on the back, it says RLG Odyssey. Um, it, the script writing is really weird. Reference OD2080 or something. And um, what else is that? High beat 9039 automatic movement. I don't know why they use this really kind of tacky script writing on the back. Why would you do that? Why couldn't you just use, I don't know, some sort of sans serif font of some sort? Um, it uses a bit, or maybe just use the Odyssey font. That's a way better font. That's that, that font in the back is, is, I don't know. I think they were trying to mimic some sort of old English look. Anyways, as I mentioned before, it's solid and links and uh, yeah, Drill Lux makes it a lot easier to change. So that's basically um, the full 360 look at the ROG Odyssey watch. It is a stunner of a watch. Um, so the next thing to do is to chuck it onto the wrist. Now, before I do that, let's do a wrist watch check. I am wearing the Citizen Promaster Pepsi dive watch you know, on a Bond NATO strap that is a single pass. Absolutely special looking for me. Um, I will be doing a review on that, but first, let's check this bad boy out. Now my understanding from memory is the Citizen is a 38, so this is a 39, so it, it does wear, it should wear very, very similar. Um, this is obviously not size, yes, I, I just opened it. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off and chuck it on and see how it looks. And there we are, oh my lordy lord. Dude, you guys need to buy it like now, if there's stock, Get it, oh wow, okay. Look, I, I need to, I really need to like, get rid of a lot of links, look at that, like at least four links. Um, but this wears so well on my tiny six and a quarter inch wrist. Um, so if you've got tiny wrist, this is the dive watch for you. I mean the Pepsi, this, this Pro Diver is great. But that vintage looking RLG, wow, this is really like a tool watch, I mean, you can probably see yourself going to, you know, swim and do all these other stuff with it. This one, maybe because of the, the metal bracelet, um, I mean, it's really sporty, but I feel like you can kind of like wear it to work, like with a shirt and tie, like a business settings. I'm not saying you can dress it up or anything. I mean, like it's not black tie, but this is definitely something you can wear with a shirt and also on a, on a you know, casual day to the beach, you can de definitely wear this. The bracelet is, I think is the highlight. I'm, I'm, I really like the bracelet. I wonder if I can just put this into a, like another watch. I probably can. Um, or maybe not, it seems a bit, this one doesn't like, look like I can put it anywhere else. Um, ooh, yeah, get it. So far, get it. Look, I'm not gonna tell you how to buy your, you spend your money actually, but um, I'm 100% happy about my purchase right now, especially because I got it at the discount. But $429 for this watch, I feel like it's worth it. They put a lot of effort into this. They, I can tell they actually thought about everything. You know, like how the industry is, how much loom they put on it and everything. Like, oh, anyways, let's check out the loom shot and then uh, for, show you the final conclusion to my unboxing and first impressions. So that was the RLG Odyssey in pastel blue. It is a stunning, stunning watch. Absolutely gorgeous. I guess I say that a, uh, a lot about the watches that I kind of buy and bring it. I mean, I did research everything before I get it. So, you know, kind of don't really miss the ball there. <laughs> but after having it in my hand, seeing how beautiful that sapphire bezel is and how it just kind of bulges just slightly, it's just amazing. And just take a peep at this. Doesn't that look stunning? the sapphire crystal um it just looks amazing and then it looks a lot better in person than it does in camera um, and i think the sapphire bezel really just kicks it up that extra little bit and for 370 i think it's 450 or so whatever it is on the website right now i believe it's worth it for the movement is great i don't know too much about it i think it's a own movement but it feels it's not very noisy 
I can still hear the roller a little bit, but it's not super noisy. It doesn't have a ghost day like a lot of boutique brands do. The Richard Legrand logo has been toned down. It's got that kind of like, um, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six sided shape. And then the little Odyssey text on the bottom is very subtle, slightly script font. It's, it's nice. Now, plot indices stand out so much and the loom is... It's strong enough. It's not the strongest we've seen, but it's as you saw, it is strong enough. The only qualm, qualm is that a word that I have with it, is the back where the engraving on the back uses a script font that looks really tacky or cheesy. Um, I'm not sure why they went down that route, but um, I probably would change that or just have like no, normal sans serif font or even the same font that we have on the other seat at the front. But having said that, who's looking at the back of the watch? Nobody. I forgot to mention that the links um, here folds inward. So that means it's a, it's a tapered, it's an even more tapered look than many other uh, straps. So, and the bracelet is awesome for the price range. Normally at this price range, you'll be getting the crappy Seiko hollow end link bracelets. Um, or maybe if it's a solid end link, it's just the, the steel doesn't feel like it's really solid. This one does. And it's a uh, uh, milled clasp. So it's, it's, you know, it's not pressed and, and kind of cheap feeling. So for the price you're getting, you know, every bang for buck you're getting. So I feel like it's it's a worthy investment. Now I have to wear it for longer and do a full review. So there's a lot of stuff that I'll probably find out over time. But otherwise, that's my first impressions. That's the unboxing of the RLG Odyssey in pastel blue. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you can leave me a comment and tell me what you thought about the watch and if you have it, and if you've got any kings that I should know about, that would be great. Otherwise, you guys have been amazing. I'm the Chirpy Panda. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Oh.